Hey there team, I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. After the massive success of World of Warcraft, it wasn't long before its expansion would be released, filled with new plot elements and focusing on some older characters from previous Warcraft games. If you haven't watched the previous lore recap videos, I highly recommend checking them out before watching this one, in case I skip over a few things. Anyway... This is an abbreviated history lesson, so I will be skipping some things here and there, but it will be all the lore you need to know that canonically happened during the 2007 released expansion, The Burning Crusade. Now, our story all starts in the Eastern Kingdoms, in the Elven Kingdom of Quel'Thalas, with Prince of the High Elves, Kael'thas Sunstrider. Kael'thas is a powerful mage who eventually becomes a member of Dalaran's Council of Six, the highest and most elite of the mages of the Wizard City. Years later, he develops a crush on this girl called Jaina Proudmoore, but finds out she's in a relationship with a totally different prince and gets super salty. During the events of Warcraft 3, that certain prince, Prince Arthas Menethel of Lordaeron, becomes a servant to the Lich King and amasses an army of undead which ravage the human kingdom. Arthas then leads his undead scourge to the elven kingdom of Quel'Thalas to use its font of power, the Sunwell. Arthas swept through the high elven defenses, slaughtering well over 50% of the entire high elven population finally arriving at the Sunwell. And the Sunwell is this impossibly powerful source of magic and power that filled the High Elves. It was like an energy source that gave them strength. And after Arthas and his Scourge corrupted the Sunwell to bring the necromancer Kel'Thuzad back as a lich and destroyed Silvermoon in the process, the undead began their march to Dalaran. When Kale hears about this, he abandons Dalaran to meet its downfall, since nobody was going to help him, and the only person he cared about in Dalaran didn't love him, but instead loved the murderer of his people. So Kale leaves and heads back to Quel'Thalas, only to find his homeland destroyed and most of his people dead. There, he and the remaining High Elves would destroy the corrupted Sunwell leaving them now hungry and drained, since their source of energy for thousands of years had been cut off. Addicted to mana, Kale led some of the now newly named Blood Elves to Dalaran, leaving Lorthamar Theron as Regent Lord over Quel'Thalas and the remaining Blood Elves until Kale returned. And this is where Kale's role in Warcraft 3 happens. I cover this all in the Warcraft 3 lore video, but real quick, Kale eventually makes it to the ruins of Dalaran where he and his soldiers are taken prisoner by Lord Garethos. Illidan Stormrage's serpent servant Lady Vosh helps Kael'thas and the Blood Elves escape their prison cells, and then they all teleport to Outland to meet Illidan. There in Outland, Illidan promises Kale a cure to his people's mana addiction, which is essentially just feeding off of fell magic instead of arcane magic. The Blood Elves help Illidan and the Naga defeat the Fell Orcs and Demons of Outland, but ultimately are discovered by Kill Jaden, one of the main leaders of the Burning Legion, and he tasks them with killing the Lich King in Northrend. Illidan and his armies try to kill Arthas and the Scourge in Icecrown, but fail and retreat back to Outland. After the failed attack on Icecrown, Kale takes over a former fortress in Netherstorm known as Tempest Keep, and captures its sole guardian, a powerful being called a Naru. Kel then sends soldiers back to Azeroth to retake Silvermoon and teach the Azeroth-bound Blood Elves how to deal with mana addiction, the way Illidan taught Kale. The prince even delivers them the captured Naru, Muru, which a group of Blood Elves used to siphon and control the power of the light. These elves would be known as Blood Knights. But while the people of Silvermoon had their addiction satiated for now, they were craving a more permanent replacement for what the Sunwell had left behind. Kale, failing to find that permanent replacement, became unstable and untrusting of his people. He doubted himself for coming to Outland since they still hadn't found the promised cure. 
and he believed his people doubted him for the same reasons. Some of Kale's soldiers started defecting from his army, seeing Outland not as the paradise Kale and Illidan had promised, but as a prison on a dying world. These soldiers were sent to fight off some resistance in Shatrath City, but they ultimately defected and joined the Naru. This only added to Kale's continued paranoia, which caused him to enter an alliance with Kill Jaden. The Demon Lord promised Kale a way to satisfy the hunger the Blood Elves felt, in exchange for their allegiance to the Burning Legion. When the Blood Elves found out about Kale working with the demons, a large number of them considered it a betrayal and abandoned Kale and joined the Naru. The Blood Elves of Silvermoon heard about this betrayal as well, and they decided to leave Kale Thas and were offered a position to join the Horde, thanks to Sylvanas Windrunner, leader of the Horde faction, the Forsaken. Many years ago, on the planet Argus, there lived a people known as the Eridar. And one day, the Burning Legion invaded the planet, corrupting and absorbing the Eridar into the Legion itself. One of the leaders of the Eridar, Prophet Valen, resisted the Legion's corruption. Valen then rallied as many Eridar as he could, and with the help of powerful beings of light known as the Naru, Valen and his followers escaped Argus and the Burning Legion. Now calling themselves the Draenei, Valen and his people traveled the stars on the Naru ship called the Janadar, which after years of travel eventually crash-landed on the planet Draenor. The Draenei lived on Draenor for over 200 years, more or less peacefully, with the Orcs, who also called that world home. But the Burning Legion eventually came a colon, as it always does, and the Legion tempted the Orcs with demon blood to kill the Draenei. As they did, the Orcs united into a force known as the Horde, and the Horde would cull nearly all of the Draenei on Draenor. Velen and some of the surviving Draenei went deep into hiding for many years, avoiding orcs, demons, and eventually Illidari forces. The Draenei led an assault on the Blood Elf-occupied Tempest Keep where they were able to steal a former Naru ship, the Exodar. The Exodar would end up colliding into a planet, this one being Azeroth. They landed on the Azermist Isles off the coast of Kalimdor. There, they ran into the Alliance, which they had heard about from the Sons of Lothar, and decided to join them. And on Azeroth, the Dark Portal hadn't been open in almost 20 years, but a Doomguard called Lord Kazakh found an unknown artifact of incredible power, which he used to reopen the Dark Portal into Outland. The Draenei convinced the Alliance to venture out into Outland to stop the flow of demons, and the Blood Elves convinced the Horde to do the same, both factions fearing for their people that had been left behind on the deteriorating world. The Horde and Alliance find Shatrath City and find out that the Lord of Outland is Illidan Stormrage, and that Illidan is power-hungry and insane. Illidan tries fighting the Horde, the Alliance, the Shatar of Shatrath, all for soul control over Outland, while the Burning Legion and their demons, led by Kill Jaden, are also on Outland trying to kill Azeroth soldiers, the Shatar, and Illidan. Heroes from Warcraft 2 are also met in Shathrath City, like Khadgar, as well as some other members of the Sons of Lothar, and they have allied themselves with the Shatar of Shatrath as well as the Naru in their fight against Illidan and their fight against the Burning Legion. The Horde and the Alliance team up and go throughout Outland taking on prominent members of Illidan's army, like Kargath Bladefist and the Felwork army in Hellfire Citadel, Lady Vosh and her Naga in Serpent Shrine Cavern, and Kael Thas and his remaining loyal Blood Elves in Tempest Keep. Akama was once a vindicator of Karabor, the great temple of light of the Draenei. But when the Burning Legion corrupted the orcs and stirred them to war, Karabor fell and became the Black Temple. After Ner'zhul used the Black Temple to sunder Draenor over 20 years ago, Magtheridon and the Burning Legion took over what remained of what was now called Outland. Akama, along with many of the Draenei, was infected and plagued by fell energies used by the orcs. He became what was called a Broken, 
and shunned away from the Draenei in order to not infect anybody else. Akama led several other broken Draenei in claiming some of their land back from the Legion. Years later, Illidan would arrive in Outland, where Akama would pledge his service to the Demon Hunter in hopes of retaking the Black Temple. And when Illidan did reclaim the ruins of Karabor, he took over the temple for himself. Illidan grew more corrupted by the fell magic he used, and out of fear of his enemies, Arthas and his scourge and killed Jaden in the Burning Legion, Illidan began to consolidate more and more power and hold a tighter grasp on Outland. Akama realized that Illidan was no improvement over Magtheridon, and so Akama reached out to Maiev's Shadow Song for assistance. Maiev hunted Illidan throughout Warcraft 3, trying to re imprison the Betrayer. And Maiev, still filled with all this hatred for Illidan, led strike after strike against the Illidari forces, until Illidan became aware of Akama's treachery with Maiev. Illidan bound a part of Akama's soul, holding it prisoner in the Black Temple, which forced Akama to bend to Illidan's rule. Akama then led Maiev and her soldiers into a trap where all but Maiev were killed. The Warden was taken to a prison to be tortured and trapped there forever. But as it goes, the Scryers and Aldor of Shatrath City and heroes of the Horden Alliance began to fight back against Illidan and his forces throughout all of Outland, which renewed Akama's plans to remove the Betrayer for good. Akama and Maiev schemed a way to free her and for a way to open the gates of the Black Temple and finally kill Illidan. During an assault on the Black Temple led by the armies of Shatrath, the champions of Adal broke into the Black Temple and helped Akama restore his soul. Afterwards, Maiev was freed while the remaining Illidari forces were defeated, leaving only Illidan left. Illidan almost defeats the champions of Shatrath, but is stopped by the timely arrival of Maiev's Shadow Song, who ultimately kills Illidan and saves Outland from yet another tyrannical ruler. But her victory is hollow because, well, Illidan said it best himself. You have won, Maiev, but the Huntress is nothing without the hunt. You are nothing without me. <laughs> After Kael'thas destroyed the corrupted Sunwell, the powerful magical entity was not entirely lost. Some small part of the Sunwell, not corrupted by the undead, remained. It was discovered by the red dragon Crassus, and he disguised the Sunwell as a human girl named Envina Teague. Envina was hidden away in the Hillsbrad foothills until one day a young dragon named Caligos was sent to investigate what happened to Quel'Thalas after its destruction. Kaelic discovered Envina, and the two fought off undead that were drawn to Envina's powers. Kaelic, Envina, and their friends set off to quell the Lost to stop an undead blood elf who was loyal to the Lich King and had betrayed Silvermoon to Arthas during Warcraft 3. Darkon Drathir led a massive force of undead in the Dead Scar right outside of Silvermoon, and the heroes alongside Sylvanas Windrunner and Lorthamar Theron were able to defeat him. After learning that Envina was the avatar of the Sunwell, Lorthamar promises to protect her from all threats, and Kaelic decides to stay with her to become her personal bodyguard. After his defeat in Tempest Keep, it turns out that Kael'thas is still alive, and escaped back to Azeroth where he attacked Silvermoon City, and stole back the Naru, Muru, along with Anvina, and fled to the Isle of Quel'Danas. There, Kale, more wretched and mana-addicted than ever, set about to bring his new master, Kill Jaden, into the world of Azeroth. By using Envina and the power of the Sunwell, new hordes of demons began to flood through into the Isle of Quel'Danas, and the armies of Shatrath came together under the banner of the Shattered Sun Offensive to stop them. 
the shattered sun Kilkelthos began a siege against the Sunwell Plateau. Inside, however, was more than just demons. Caligos and his companion Madragosa had ventured into the Sunwell to rescue Anvina, ultimately though, ending in Madragosa's death. The Shattered Sun offensive broke through many of the demons' defenses, and alongside Caligos defeated a void corrupted Muru and several burning Legion lieutenants. Finally arriving at the Sunwell where Kil'jaeden was partially summoned into the world. And Venus sacrificed herself to send Kil'jaeden back to the Nether and stop the flow of demons for good. After the battle ended, Valen arrived with the essence of the now dead Muru and combined it with the Sunwell to restore the Sunwell to its non corruptive state. But now, instead of being a well of purely arcane magic like it was before, it was a mixture of both arcane magic and the power of the light. So, I'm just going to give a little bit of bonus lore real quick. The war chief of the Orcish Horde, Thrall, ventures into Outland to find some of the original orcs that still live there, including Grom Hellscream's son, Garrosh. Thrall comforts Garrosh and tells him of the great accomplishments of Grom and how Grom liberated the orcs from Manoroth's control. Thrall then invites all the remaining Maghar orcs on Outland into the Horde. And that about does it. I skipped some things here, skipped some things there, but all in all, this was all the lore you need to know about the Burning Crusade to get you into Wrath of the Lich King. I didn't cover stuff like Gruul or Zulaman or Karazhan because they didn't fit in with any of the other stories, but I'll most likely come back to them in the future because Karazhan and ZA are in my top three favorite raids ever. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, have a good one, and take it easy.